Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Okay, I have a deceptively complex one for you today. Deceptively complex in that it seems really simple to do, but it actually it takes a lot of steps. Not necessarily hard, it's just a lot to do. And it's actually the solution to two problems I have. One is an overabundance of scrap leather. Just so much scrap leather. And two is a knife without a sheath. Sounds like the name of like an old samurai movie, The Knife Without a Sheath. All right, you see where we're going. We're making a sheath and leveling up this skill. Making templates. Before we get going, if you find this useful, consider giving me that thumbs up love and don't forget to subscribe. It helps the algorithm know that you like this stuff and really helps my channel grow. Now I have many sharp end pointies around here, but this is the only one I have that doesn't currently have a sheath. And that is less than safe, so let's fix that. He says while well, drinking whiskey and brandishing a knife. So to start making my template for this thing, I took some paper and folded it in half. This is gonna give me a nice center line mark to work with. So I go ahead and place my knife along that center line, lining it up from the tip all the way to the top center of my handle. Then just to make it easier to work with, I trace out the shape of my knife. Okay, so a couple of years ago, I had made this sheath for one of my other knives. I was far less skilled with leather at the time, but it's turned out pretty good and it's held up well. But as you can see, we need some extra space in order to accommodate the stitch line here and the welt, which is the little piece of leather in here that adds space so that the knife can actually fit inside. So to accommodate that extra space, we're gonna add 3 eighths of an inch all around the blade of the knife drawing. Now to set that 3 eighths of an inch, you could just measure all along that drawing and mark it out. But if you have a wing divider, a much easier way to do this is just to set it at that 3 eighths of an inch and then trace all along your drawing, leaving an indentation in the paper. Then you just go back in and trace out that indentation to make it easier to see. And just an FYI, I made the top of that sheath kind of shape right where the bolster begins. This right here, this transition point between the blade and the handle, it's called the bolster. I didn't know that until I was making this, but there you go. The thought here being the thickness of the bolster is gonna be a nice resting point for it to stop going inside the sheath. All right, so the way this overall design works is you have a back plate here that goes longer and then loops over on itself to form this kind of uh, belt loop here. Then we have that welt to add a little bit of extra space and then that top plate to kind of round it off and finish up the front. So to set my belt loop here into that template, I first measured the length of the handle. And then I just doubled that to get the overall length of my belt loop. Then for the width, I just wanted it to cover all of the handle. So this brought me to about an inch and a quarter. With that established, I went back in with a French curve and just smoothed out the transition from the sheath up to the loop. Then I went ahead and cut that bad boy out with my X-Acto knife. And as you can see, when bent over, the loop ends up pretty close to the handle length. Okay, so you see how the little keeper strap and buckle here is placed at this thinner area in order to stop the, the knife from being able to come out of the sheath? Well, I thought the best place for that on this one would be right where it narrows for the little finger rest here. Now, I also want that little strap to loop around all the leather material too, so I figured I'd just go ahead and mark and then cut out that little finger rest location. This way, the keeper will hold onto the knife tighter while I'm rolling around on adventures and quests and whatnot. Okay, for one last detail, I press hard into the locations that I want the rivets to go, just so that the marks transfer to both sides of the paper. Cool, so that was the tricky part of the template process. All the rest of the pieces though are gonna be built off of that and all the measurements we made. So it's a really good idea to take your time with that bit and, and make sure everything is as perfect as can be. Like the top plate section here, all you have to do to make that is align the throat of our template right along the edge of your paper and then trace that in. Once that bad mofo is free, just make sure you mark which side the top is so that you know how to position it onto your leather. Because remember, your leather has a rough side and a smooth side. So whichever side you kind of want to be facing the outside, probably the smooth side, you need to make sure you mark that on your template so that you don't turn it the wrong way when you go to draw it out. All right, so the last bit we need now is the welt. To make this, I just trace out the same exact shape. When I cut it out though, I stay well outside of my lines. This way I can cut it once it's in place and it's gonna match the rest of it perfectly. We do need to remove the material in the middle though so that the knife has space to be able to fit inside. So to do that, I just place the blade where it's gonna sit within that space and then trace around it. Then I just cut that out, leaving me with the needed space. All right, so that felt like a lot of steps and planning and whatever, but this is gonna make everything else so much easier. But since that's complete, we can move on to prepping the leather. 
Now for this project, I'm going to be using this scrap piece of eight ounce leather I have. Now this paper isn't the best template material, so rather than try to draw around it onto the leather, I just go ahead and tape the leather in place using some semi-transparent masking tape. Using that, I can just cut around those templates using a razor knife with a brand new blade. Always use a fresh blade because the dull blade kind of sticks and you're going to end up getting more cuts with a dull blade than you with a sharp blade. Oh, and once that's free, don't forget to drop in your rivet holes. I just kind of pushed into my marks to make the indents on the leather. Then punched them out just so it was all done and I didn't have to think of it anymore. So I made this one a little bit different than I'm going to make the other one. This one I bent in kind of forward here so it was all the smooth side facing always. But you see how I kind of rounded off the bottom here? That just adds a more finished look, so I wanted to do that with this one. So I again busted out my French curve and just made a nice rounded end to that so it looked a little cleaner. Now for my keeper, I decided to use this four ounce leather cut to about a half of an inch wide. I like this four ounce leather because it's more flexible and I just don't think it will be as bulky sitting on top of my knife. Cause this has such nice little flowy angles and whatnot. I kind of want to show that off a little more. Now to get the measurement on how long I needed that strap to be, I just laid my knife in place on the leather and folded everything up how it'd have to go, wrapping the keeper around everything to get a rough measurement. Now in case you're wondering, the length of that strap ended up being just about five inches long. Now for the eventual stitches that I'm gonna put in here to hold everything together, I like them to be about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So using my stitch groover, I go ahead and put those things a quarter of an inch away from the edge. I do this all around the edges of the front plate only. Even across the top, which isn't gonna be getting sewn into place, but I just kinda like how that frames out the rest of this little canvas I got going on here. All right, so from here, I wanna kinda start finishing off the leather edges like we usually do, hitting it with the edge beveler but I only do that in spots that aren't going to be sewn. So none of the blade section here, only the part that's gonna be folded over and also on the keeper as well. I do this to both the front and back, and then I moisten it and hit it with the edge slicker just to lay down those edges nicely. Now, because this kind of front plate here has a nice little bit of real estate, I decided I wanted to tool in a cool image. The cool image I decided to go with was this clever fox. He's clever, like a fox, clever fox. It works, I think it works. To set this in, I just went ahead and wet down my leather, laid it into position, and then traced out all my lines with my stylus. This, of course, left me with an exact image of my fox. Then I was back in with a swivel knife to cut in those lines, then my bevel stamp to make them pop. And already this thing looks beautiful. I love how that comes up. By the way, if this feels like it's going really fast, I've covered a lot of leather on this channel, so check out this playlist here to kind of see more step-by-step -step on how to do those things. Now to make that fox pop even more, I decided to use this background stamp and just add a nice texture to everywhere else. And this really does a nice job of helping to set that fox apart from the background. I really love how easy kind of leather tooling can be and how fast it makes something look cool. That looks cool. All right, so now's the point I'm gonna punch in my lace holes. But again, we are only doing it on that top plate. The reason being, if we kind of sandwich everything on top of each other and then start punching our holes through all of it, the odds are those holes aren't gonna go down straight and they're gonna end up all kind of wonky. We'll address this later on, but for now, I started by using a four hole punch and just tracing along my line. Once I hit this curved area though, I needed to switch to my two hole punch just to make that transition easier. This ended with a really nice, even result. And I love it when my leather projects get to this stage. It looks like one of those kit pieces you buy that were kind of already machine tooled and stuff. It looks nice. But it's about to look nicer because we're gonna drop some color into this mofo. I start by dropping in some USMC black in the ears, snoot, the little swirls on his body, and the eyes. I also decided to hit the border with this too just because it closes everything off nicely. Then I decided to hit everything with an ox blood because you know, a red fox. Getting an even coat on the front and the back. Now a dip dye would have been easier to get this all done, but I did not have enough of the ox blood for that. So that's what I went with. But cool, that is all set and looking sexy. At this point, we're ready for putting it all together. Okay, to make putting it all together easier, I'm gonna glue the pieces together first and then we'll get into stitching. it. To mark out on the back of the front plate where that glue needs to go first, I just lay my knife into position and then trace around it. This way I know everywhere outside that line is where I need to glue. Also, to help the welt stick, I go ahead and rough up the smooth side of it. Now to connect everything together, I'm using barge contact adhesive. This I just brush into place on both pieces. And then after about 15 minutes, I carefully put them together for an instant bond. And testing it out, the knife fits in there 
perfectly. I love it when a plan comes together. It's already looking good. But again, do you see how we cut the welt proud so it sticks out of the edges? Now we can go back in and cut all that excess away using that top plate side as a guide. This makes sure the cut perfectly matches. With that all in place, I do the same thing, gluing all along the welt and on the bottom plate. And again, this is just for a hold, so where you place the glue doesn't need to be perfect. Just don't put it too close into the middle so it doesn't get on your knife. And that's honestly pretty slick. It's, it's pretty close to perfect, but I think we can get it a little bit better. To do this, I just busted out some 100 grit sandpaper and smoothed out any of the high points. And that is looking so much better. All the lines are nice and clean and it looks like one piece. <sighs> Love it. Okay, so from here, we need to prep to be able to sew them all together, which means we need those holes to extend all the way down through the other two pieces of leather. Now, normally I would use my one hole punch here and hit it one at a time, but it's just too shallow to reach all the way through. But I will not be deterred. So instead, I decided to use this stitching awl. The basic technique here is to position it into one of your holes and go as straight down as possible. Once through, it leaves these small holes that I can then use as a guide to use my other punch and make them more perfect. And sure, this is a little bit time consuming and arduous, but at the end, the look is super clean. Like all the best things, they take some time and patience. Both of which I have historically little of, but I did good on this one. All right, so to sew everything together, I'm gonna be using a saddle stitch. All right, so here is footage of me doing the saddle stitch. It's not particularly hard and it's a super reliable stitch, but it's also one that I've done a full tutorial on right here. So if you need to learn how to do a saddle stitch, just give that a look. Once I finished up nipping and melting the ends into place, I just flattened out my stitch with a hammer. And look at that, that is looking slick. That has to be one of the cleanest like saddle stitch jobs I've ever done. And I, I don't like to stitch by hand generally, but this one came out good. I'm proud of this one. Thank you, right here. All right, I think I actually pulled something on that one. All right, with that looking just so good, it's time to wrap it up with finishing touches. All right, this is the portion in which we finish putting things together and make it look pretty. And we start this process by beveling those edges that we didn't hit yet. Basically just everywhere along the blade portion of the sheet. And because we tooled all the edges up, I go back in with my black dye and make sure everything's looking nice and even. I also hit it a little bit with the red dye just to make this transition look nicer. And I think that worked. That looks really clean. Speaking of making it look clean, to make those edges look kind of glassy smooth, I went ahead and busted out some of this gum tragacanth. All you have to do is paint it on the edges and then use the slicker to even everything out. And this makes those edges look so smooth. Looks like it's all one piece. It looks really good. I liked it so much, I just use it on all the rest of the edges. That being said, whenever I don't use gum tragacanth on my leather projects, and I don't usually for some reason, I end up using like um, beeswax or whatever, I get a significant amount of people give me hell about not using gum tragacanth. So, gum tragacanth, you're welcome. Cool, so to add some extra protection and shine to this, I hit everything with a resist. I especially like hitting the flesh side of the leather with the resist because it lays everything down and just makes it look a little less fuzzy and messy. And when I shine that up, oh, so good. It looks so good. I did, however, wanna make that fox pop just a little bit more. So I went back in with a mahogany antique, making sure it got into all the little nooks and crannies before wiping it away. And this does add a subtle kind of distinction away from that textured background area. and just makes all the lines a little bit darker and the fox generally kind of pop more. Cool, from here, all we really have to do is take care of that belt loop portion and the keeper. So I start that by locking in my loop with a rivet in the top hole only. This is because I wanna use that bottom hole to set my keeper in as well. So I take my keeper and I bend it in half just so I know exactly where the hole needs to go. Then I lock it and the two pieces of leather together with a rivet. And though a double cap rivet would probably look better, I think this still looks pretty slick. All right, so if I'm gonna be wearing a knife, I like to wear it on my right hip. So I put it into place and just kind of felt out how the keeper strap would unbuckle and buckle the easiest. Doing that, I figured out how I wanted the leather to overlap and was able to press in with an awl to mark right where my button needed to be. Speaking of buttons, I'm using one that I really like. It's just this little stud button. Once the hole is punched for it, all you have to do is screw it into place. It has a very clean, minimal, slick look, and I really like it. Now for the eye for that button to actually fit through, all you have to do is punch a hole just a bit smaller than the head of the button. Now, of course, it's smaller, so the button's not gonna fit through that. So in order to make that work, you need to cut in a little relief line. 
I just carefully cut a line coming from the hole out about a quarter of an inch. As you can see, this allows enough space for the button to come through. The look is simple and slick, though I did dye a little bit of that internal leather that ended up showing. And BAM! Check that out! Look at how slick this came out! It's super clean and shiny and Oh, it just, it's so good. The tooling design is simple, but it doesn't take too much away from the knife, and I really love it. The thing I love most about this project is the difference between this one and this one. If you kind of know what you're looking at, you'll see like my cuts aren't as clean, the stitch lines aren't all that straight because at the time I tried going through all the pieces at once. I had tried to cut the welt exact the first time so it's a little bit too small so it has kind of an inset. This one I went by very much the seat of my pants. This one I had a plan for and I made sure I made this first measurements to be correct, like my template measurements were good. I don't know, it's just cool to look back at the same project, trying the same project again, and seeing how much your talents have increased over time. But anyway, this is a really cool project to do that you can make as complex or as simple as you want it to be. So do me a favor, if you're into trying Leathercraft stuff, give this one a go and leave either a link in the description to an image or join us on the Discord so you can share it with me. In fact, if you do, I will share it on the show. I'll highlight them. And of course, special shout out to my Patreon members. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do any of this. You make it all possible. So thank you for all that you do. I really appreciate you. If any of you like what I'm doing here and would like to see the channel grow, why don't you consider joining the Patreon? Link in the description below. Also, if you like what I do here, hit me with some of that like it love, and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. And finally, if there's anything you'd like to see me cover on this show, why don't you leave it down in the comment section and I'll add it to the list. And one last thing, if you liked what you saw here, why don't you consider checking out this video that YouTube thinks you'd like too. All right, I should get going. I really like making sheaths, but I've run out of knives, so I've got to make some of them too. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you.